Hi guys, okay, back again. Okay, so this week, first of all, how are you going with the uh, I choose and the I wires? Hopefully you're doing it every day and just being curious, hopefully about what's happening within you because change happens slowly over time if you do something consistently, we know that. As much as we don't like that, we want it all to happen now, don't we? We want to go to bed and wake up feeling and thinking differently or looking differently. That's just not the way it works here on planet Earth. So you do have to stick to it. So hopefully you're doing it. Keep on. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then just go back and watch the last two or three videos and you'll get the idea. So today, what are we talking about? Well, I actually don't know. I just came on here and thought I would just go with the flow and just kind of have one of those ad-lib days where I haven't got anything in my head, I haven't really got anything planned. And so I just thought I'd do whatever comes up. So usually when I'm working with a client, I would always start here because, and I've said this in another video, if you wanna be more able to manage your emotions here, then it really helps if you've got much more positive mindset, a much more positive script. And a lot of us haven't uh, because of the way we've been conditioned, wired, programmed, groomed. Um, you know, a lot of us were brought up with a very strict work ethic, you know, and unless you're busy and working and earning, then you're not really worthy. And, um, and so, and a lot of us are coming from that space where I'm only okay if I've got a big house and money and cars and kids and a wife and, you know, and it's an idealism, isn't it? It's an idealistic view of, yeah, in an ideal world, maybe you would have all that. I don't know. Is that what you want? Have you even thought about what you want? <laughs> I know I hadn't, not, I hadn't at all until quite late on, which was a bit tragic really. But anyway, um, I didn't really think about what I wanted. It never seemed to be about me or what I wanted and what I needed or what I felt excited about. It was just getting on with life. It was do, doing what you had to do, what you had to work and you had to suck it up and stop sitting around feeling sorry for yourself. <laughs> Um, because that wasn't going to do no good. And I realised that kind of gave me a bit of resilience. And I think, you know, I am fairly resilient, but I, I had actually very deep-seated uh, low self-worth um, and real issues, people please, imperfectionism. And, and really, that was a symptom of being brought up in that era, in that time where we were seen and not heard. And so you do have to do a bit of work, rewire this, um, help the subconscious and conscious move in the same direction as opposed to this, because that will really help. And as you do that, and I suppose this is the next part of what I would work, you know, when I'm working with someone. So you've got to set the scene to create a safe space. And a lot of people haven't got a safe space because they was never given a safe space growing up. And so they haven't created one of their own. They haven't created that ability to self-soothe, to hold space for uncomfortable emotions because maybe we were told along the way, uh, don't do that, I won't love you if you do. And so, simply put, um, so we have to learn to sit in, in our space within us that, that at times can be excruciatingly painful and uncomfortable. And I'm not saying this is easy and, you know, it doesn't happen like that. But sometimes life brings us situations, experiences that kind of force us to have to deal with some of that uncomfortable, emotional, because you can't run from it. You know, if someone really close to you passes away, takes their own life, has a disease, it's, it's painful. If your whole circumstances change, maybe your partner leaves you, or God forbid someone you know, you know, like really well, something happens to them, then you're confronted with life's crappy, distressing experiences, which we all go through and we all have happened to us. I don't think I know anyone that's kind of come through life and not been affected by anything, shape or form. Unless you live on an island and you are completely on your own, but then maybe, you know, there's a cyclone. So that's something you've got to deal with. Hey, I'm sure, you know, there's things you've had to deal with, even if you're on your own. Loneliness, for example. And so for me, the next part of the therapy, and we have talked about inner child work, but I haven't really, really 
gone through it with anyone or with you, um, the viewer. And if you are here today, then you're meant to be here somewhere, somehow, somewhere, the logarithm put this in front of you, maybe because it's something you need to hear. So please hang around um, because this is really good stuff. So let's just set the scene like we did a little bit with the eye wiring and the rewiring and the eye chews. Let's set the scene because I think inner child work is something I have, depends who it is and who walks through the door. Everyone's so different and so unique. You can't set an agenda and it's never the same for anybody. But I do think the theme of what people struggle with is similar. Um, so it's grief, it's loss, it's relationships. So the themes are similar, but everyone's individual and the way they react to it and respond and their worldview and where they come from and what they want is, is always unique and different to that individual person. And so in that sense, you work on an individual basis, but I think we all need to rewire this, learn to manage this, take responsibility of the body. And when we are a better advocate for this thing we call our avatar, then I think life seems to go a little bit smoother for us. So it's about learning to do what you can. So let me set the scene for doing some really, um, and this is quite intense work, inner child work. So let me set the scene. So first of all, we're going to break you up into three parts. Now, we're going to call those parts, and look, I've got, I look, I'm all prepared today. I don't know why I got this out. Actually, I've got a client after, and I was going to use it. That's why I've got it out. So I won't pretend I got it out because I was going to do this because I actually didn't know what I was going to do today. So I'm going to break you up into three parts. Oh, good job because I haven't used these pens. Okay. Three parts. Now, you've all heard mind, body, soul. Mind body so okay so we're breaking you up into three parts now the mind part is the thinker and the judger so I'm just gonna write that down the thinker and the judger and that's what we call the mind and we're gonna call this part the parent part yeah so the parent is the part that's in their head it thinks it judges and it you know does all that stuff so the body now that's the everyday part that's the part that goes out does work pays the bills you know does all that stuff socializes with your friends does life that's that's that adult part and we're going to call that the body part and so that's the everyday part and the logical part that's the one that thinks rationally logically and we're going to call that the adult part Okay, you with me? So the soul, spirit, inner truth, inner heart space, call it what you like, we call it lots of different things. Soul, we're gonna, this part is the part that holds all the emotions. So this is the emotional part. Yeah, you with me? And we're gonna pull this, the child part. So can you see how we've break, broken you up into three parts, mind, body mind being the parent um, thinker judger the adult being the logical everyday part and then the child being the emotional part and that's the um, uh, the soul part is the emotional part which we're going to call the child why do you think we do this because I think this is quite why do we do this I'll tell you why we do this we do this to help you understand that if these three parts are working well then you don't always feel good on the inside. So we need to look at those three parts. We need to assess them and understand them and um, see where, you know, where you're at in all those three aspects. So when you come out of the womb, the first seven years of your life, you're being brainwashed, socialized on the planet by those parents. And this happens to all of us. We have to be socialized, which means your parents' job is to help you acclimate to the planet Earth. And on the sea, obviously, in the beginning, you know, you, you have no idea of what those rules are on planet Earth. So you want to run around naked and poop all over the place and scream and shout and carry on and cry and blah, blah, blah. Of course, that's what kids do. 
and but then you get to a point where you have to start understanding the rules so you can't just run out into a road you can't just put your fingers in the hole in the sockets you can't go near boiling water now your parents if they're really good parents and most parents are they will are trying to keep you safe from physical harm trying to keep you safe in the world and so your parents are just socializing you and trying to help you adapt to the planet and that's the key word and you have to learn to adapt so you have to learn to wear clothes to keep your shoes on <laughs> to brush your teeth to learn to listen and talk and read and write and arithmetic and do your buttons up and do your shoelaces up and eat all the dinner on the plate so they're constantly teaching you how to navigate the planet and in that you're taking all these messages in and you're learning how to be on the planet now this is where all parents kind of mess up because no parent can be there 100 percent for you it's just not feasible possible and as a child you're an insatiably needy child that wants attention love and affection uh you know cuddles kisses um all of it you need all those things you need to be told to be seen to be heard to be affirmed to be validated to know that you're a human being and so of course parents invariably you know they're doing their best and sometimes failing miserably and sometimes falling short of the mark and that's just being a parent you know i'm um, having three kids myself i know it's not as easy to be there for them all you know in a way that they need you to be there but you learn to adapt as a kid you know you learn to sort of let go of your needs for constant approval and acceptance and love and because you're not always going to get it and you adapt and so the first seven years you're learning to be on the planet and that's where you uh, so in the beginning you're a very natural child you're just letting it all hang out you're not self-conscious you know you're just kind of free-spirited aren't you so that's what we call the natural child but then you have to adapt so i'm just going to draw you a little picture i like little pictures um so that's that's that by the way so um mind body soul parent adult child does that make sense um, and so we're going to look at how you function in these parts um, but first of all we're going to that blue pen doesn't work let's use them we're going to look at how so you were once natural <laughs> and then you adapted so we're going to look at how you function in these two parts now a lot of us had to adapt a lot more than maybe others had to. Um, maybe your adaption wasn't too bad, but if your parents were unwell or depressed or grieving or uh, you know had mental health problems or addicted to things, then that might have been a struggle, and you had to might had to do a lot of adapting. Um, so, for example, you might have had to grow up pretty quick and you know take on more of a. a, a of responsibility at a very young age and so you adapted and grew up very quickly um, and that can impact on your developmental um, capabilities and um, so we're gonna look at how you function <laughs> and so this is a lot I know so I'm just gonna put it into little nugget sized pieces so we're gonna call this inner child um, part one and we're going to do a bit like we did with the anger stuff we're going to do it in parts because i know and if you um you know if you watch this part and you really want to go to the next part then obviously if you wait a bit it will come up and you'll see it but i'm going to be doing this over the next few weeks so let's go over it again mind body soul so the mind is the thinker the judger and we're going to call that part the parent part the body is the everyday part the part that goes to work pays the bills it's logical it's every day we call that the adult part and then the spirit soul inner heart space um, you know, call it what you like spirit but this part is going to be the part that holds all the emotions and we're going to call that the child part and so we're going to break you up into three parts and then we are going to see how you um, have adapted in your natural and, and also in your adapted space. So this is about looking at how you function. And I think this is, I know it's a little bit, it's the theory behind the practical. And I know we don't always like the theory, let's just bring on the practical. But sometimes it's really interesting to get a handle on this part of it and see, and, and this is quite eye-opening. So please come back for the next part. 
I I think it would be interesting for you to do it. Um, anyway, I'm going to leave it there because um, I think it's enough said today. But come back for the next part. Hopefully I'll see you in the next part. Okay, bye for now. Bye.